Alright, this is King Known Cleary on YouTube, and this is part four of the top 50 Eminem songs. This is the top 10. Number 10, beautiful relapse. Um, this is like one of the best Eminem songs. It's just like a catchy song, it's a storytelling song, and not to mention his lyrical ability is on point throughout this record. And it's just like one of those talk to the soul type of records. And, you know, it just definitely puts your mind in a daze once you hear beautiful. Number nine, Without Me, the Eminem show. Without Me, it's just one of those funny songs, one of those catchy songs. But, and he's just delivering. Like, he just starts out, ooh, I created a monster. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They're embarrassed, but they're still looking at Elvis. They start feeling like this one, helpless. When someone comes along on a mission to yell, see, a visionary, it's not scary. Start a revolution. You know, just let me revel in back in the fact that I got everyone kissing my ass. It's just like, Eminem was, took like a two year hiatus. And we didn't know when he was going to come back. So when he came out with Without Me, like, it established, we reestablished him back into the world again. Basically tapping the inner Slim Shady. Number eight, speaking of Slim Shady, the real Slim Shady. Now after the Slim Shady LP dropped, Everybody started imitating Eminem in lots of aspects. These random white rappers who were pretty much parody guys started imitating him, dyeing their hair blonde, and just trying to act like him. And when Dr. Dre stated that there was a single needed for this record, um, Dre got a catchy beat, and, you know... And Eminem went in and killed it. Don't act like you never seen a white person before. Jaws all over the floor. Pam and Tommy just burst in the door. Started whooping her ass worse than before. They first were divorced, throwing her over furniture. Stubborn turn it up. Oh man, no way he didn't. He didn't just say what he think he did, did he? And Dr. Dre says, Nothing, you idiots. Dr. Dre's dead. He's locked in my basement. Like rhymes like that. It's just gems. That's what you call like gems in a in a sense. It's like like you know Eminem is just reestablishing Eminem to the world again for the second time on the Marshall Mathers LP. That's what uh, the real Slim Shady came from. Number seven. This is a more recent song off Marshall Mathers LP two, Rap God. Now, a lot of people are going to wonder why Rap God is in the top 10. Simple. Eminem displayed every facet of Eminem, past, present, and future. Because the, in the past, Eminem had the offbeat flow. Then he had a more controlled flow. Then, you know, as of recently, like after recovery, he developed a more Midwestern tongue, like a Bone Thugs or a Twister or... A Tech Nine type of flow, and he displayed that, and he broke records with this song. You know, it was a top ten record. It was the it was it broke the record for most words in a song, and there had been like twenty minute songs, and in about almost seven minutes, Eminem spit the worst lyrics in a song, the most lyrics in a song, and you know he gave Buster give Buster Rhymes and Twister a run for his money. And his breath control, like a lot of people don't have the breath to hold to actually rap that fast and that great. Eminem had to have done it in a lot of takes. If he did that in one take, that would be amazing. Number six, Kim. You have never heard a rap record quite like Kim. Kim tells a story about a scorned couple who are going through the ups and downs of a relationship 
which have taken a more psychopathic and supernatural turn where Eminem just goes crazy and duh, and pretty much leaves their daughter at home alone while he takes her out to a secluded area in the woods and just kills her you know what I'm saying But anyway, like, Kim is not a particular rap record. It sounds like something that you would hear, like, with death metal. And the funny part is, dur during the, 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 the storytelling, it sounds like, and I mean, he's, rhyme he's rhyming. The nigga said, shut up, bitch. You move again, I'll beat the shit out of you. Don't make me wake this baby. She don't need to see what I'm about to do. Quit crying, bitch. Why do you always make me shout at you? How could you just leave? Man, that nigga was going ham on that record. And it was just so fucking hilarious. Like, Eminem just goes in on that record. Number five, Stan. This is like one of the records that just put Eminem on the map as a household name like straight up it put Eminem on the map because of the fact that you know it had the Dido sample thank you and the 45 King produced it, it was for the Marshall Mathers LP Kim was also on the Marshall Mathers LP so Stan was just the makings of an obsessed fan cuz there are a lot of fans in the world that are crazy that will obsess over you. And I think it brought awareness to how close you keep your fans. You could ask Plies as of recently. Sipping tea right now. But anyway, Stan was just the, one of the most creative records. Like, he actually, like, was, like, writing a letter. And, he, and Eminem was rapping from a perspective of a crazy fan. That had never been done in hip-hop. There has been, like, Dear Event. There has been, like... You know, there's been stuff later on, but not to that degree to where the story takes a crazy and nutty turn once Stan's letters aren't getting replied to. He just goes crazy, kidnaps his girlfriend, and kills himself and his girlfriend. While Eminem's writing a letter and watching the news at the same time, he realizes that it's just Stan who just killed himself. Number four, lose yourself. A lot of people are going to be disappointed in the position of lose yourself. But I'm going to explain why. Lose yourself is like one of those records that you, before you go out and play a game or something, before you go out and play and all that other stuff. You know, it's like workout music because it's a motivational song. It's basic. He basically Eminem basically puts you in the mind of a battle rapper going out there. You know, his palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. The vomit on his stomach already. Mom's spaghetti. He's nervous, but on the surface he was calm and ready to drop bombs. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud he opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking now. Oh my God, dog! That nigga Eminem is stupid with it. Like to because a lot of people don't know what battle rappers really go through when they go out there. They try to remember everything that they say. I mean, some people should just go in there and just freestyle their shit and just do some of their written shit and mix it together just in case they forget. That way, they have an arsenal of punchlines and rhymes ready to go. But I'm gonna keep going. Um, number three. Till I Collapse, Eminem and Nate Dog. Man, this is a powerful record. Like, this is the type of Eminem shit that I be talking about, dude. Like, rhyming the last three words together. Like, and then you find out who Eminem's favorite artists are in order. That's never been done before. Somebody could express that they're a fan of other rappers. Because, you know, the game at that time was really competitive. 
So a lot of people wouldn't say who their favorite rappers are because they're going against them. So, you know, Eminem goes, it's like, it goes Reggie, Jay-Z, Tupac, and Biggie. Andre from Outkast, Jada, Corrupt, Nas, and Demi. And in this industry, there's a cause of a lot of envy. Envy. Yeah, because he puts himself last on the list. When he's put on his list, the shit did not defend me. Defend me. So, basically, you know, till I collapse, it's just then Nate Dogg with the signature hook, like always. You know, Nate Dogg always had a knack for courses. And he, he will always be missed. Definitely. Number two, The Way I Am. Like I said, lyrical cadence, um, haikus. Rhythm, thought process, storytelling. I sit back in this pack, it's exact, in this bag, and this weed. It gives me the shit needed to be the most meanest MC on this, on this earth. And since birth, I've been cursed with the curse to just curse and this blurt is bizarre and bizarre shit that works and sells and it hails and it. That dude was on some crazy shit, man, because Eminem produced that beat himself and the develop that lyrical flow to it you know it's kind of like how biggie does who the fuck is this paging me your 5 46 in the morning crack a dawn you know eminem did his interp i don't think he was trying to mock biggie in a certain way but i am whatever you say i am and if i wasn't then why would i say i am in the paper the news every day i am Radio won't even play my jam. It's just like Eminem just really hit it dead on upside the head with this shit because it was just so hardcore, but it was just laid back too, in a sense. And he was just tired of the label pressuring him to drop another My Name Is. You know, The Way I Am was supposed to be the first single off that album, but they ended up going with The Real Slim Shady. Because it was more catchy and radio friendly. Number one, kill you. Enough said. A lot of people are going to give me shit about it because they want Lose Yourself to be number one. Kill you is number one. It just starts off the Marshall Mathers LP. Just as you know, the way I am, of course. Lose Yourself was on the 8 Mile soundtrack. Till I Collapse was on the Eminem show. But kill you... When I was just a little baby boy, when I, my mama used to tell me the most crazy things, he used to tell me my daddy was an evil man. She used to tell me he hated me. But then I got a little bit older and I realized she was the crazy one. There was nothing I could do or say to try to change it because that's just the way she was. To, that's the first track on an album. That's the first song on an album. That brings you in. Like... They say I couldn't rap about being broke no more. They, they ain't say I couldn't rap about coke no more. Slut, you think I won't choke no whore to the vocal cords don't work in his own no more? These motherfuckers that think that I'm playing, think that I'm saying the shit to be thinking it, just to be saying it. Uh, close. Uh, man, that nigga just is amazing. Overall, I think this list serves justice. I mean... If you disagree, you're always welcome to leave comments on my Facebook page, comments on my YouTube page. It's whatever, but that's my top 50. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.